Emma? What's wrong? I feel like I should have told you so many things a long time ago. About me and Celine, and about Divine Knights and Awakeners. <sighs> it's all right, Emma. Does that mean you're ready to tell us now? <laughs> yes, I am. It's time to finally fulfill the promise I made to you during the after party. Well, if you're sure. I imagine you've heard some of this from Celine already, but still. Enrolling at Thor's was originally part of my duty as one of the Hexen clan. It's a clan of witches that traces its origins far back into the past. What kind of duty would have you enroll at a military academy? It's one that's been passed down through our clan for a long, long time. We must watch over the fragments of the great power sealed deep underground and observe whatever comes to pass regarding them. Just as it did for many others before her, that duty fell to Emma as well. When you say the Great Power, you mean Valimar, right? Did both of you know about the Divine Knights this whole time? We knew of their existence, yes. As well as the fact that they choose an Awakener. And that their chosen Awakener will be drawn into an unavoidable battle. <coughs> hmm. Just because you had the potential to become one, you were drawn into a great conflict against your will. And not just you, Reen. The rest of us have become secondary contractors. And yet I couldn't say or do anything for you. I couldn't even give you a simple word of warning. What right do I have to call myself your classmate? After failing all of you like that. Hmm. Emma? What are you talking about? Emma, you're not going to say what I think you're going to say, are you? I'm sure this isn't what you want to hear after coming all this way to find me. But this is where we should part ways. Emma. You said it yourself back in the old schoolhouse. You said Class 7 is the finest Erebonia has to offer, right? Uh. I may not always show much in the way of class spirit, but I'm confident Class 7 is the finest Erebonia has to offer. We all come from different backgrounds, and we all had things we were maybe scared to or couldn't tell anyone. Crow has his past, you have yours, I have this strange power of mine that I've carried with me for as long as I can remember. That doesn't directly relate to the Divine Knights in any way, does it? No, though there's always the possibility it may be one of the reasons why you were chosen. I know plenty about witches and their history, but none of that gives me a clue as to what your powers could be. Alright then. The point is that even after learning I had this monstrous power within me, you all accepted me without a second thought. I feel that I'm a part of Class 7 as much as anyone else, and I'm proud to say I am too. Class 7 is only the best there is because it has every one of us in it. Me, Elisa, Elliot, Laura, Fee, Machias, Eusis, Gaius, Milium, Crow, and you, Emma, you're not an exception. Without you, our class wouldn't be what it is. Just like it wouldn't be if any one of us weren't a part of it. Oh, Reen, I... What he said. I couldn't agree more. So I don't want to hear you say anything like that ever again. We want you right where you are. Guiding me, guiding all of us. And not just as a witch, but as the kind class president and caring friend you always have been. <laughs> Good.
goodness. <laughs> How can I possibly refuse when you put it like that? <laughs> All right, then. I can't deny the ancient knowledge that I possess, or my position as a witch. But I always want to remain the same Emma Milstein of Class 7 that I have been since the day I joined Thor's. So please, let me stay at your side. Of course. <laughs> that goes without saying. Class 7 really isn't Class 7 without you in it. Who else could I compete with for the top spot in the exams? What a picturesque fairy tale ending. I couldn't be more pleased. And the timing couldn't have been more perfect. I can see Legram coming into view now. Would everyone mind gathering their things and... What's that? Is that an airship? It's coming from the sky to the west. Is that... Alliance airship? Wait, that's a commanding officer ship too! Indeed. Well, it seems we have ourselves some visitors. My apologies for the unexpected arrival. I should have sent word. I am Aurelia Le Guin of the Noble Alliance. I wish to make a brief visit to the territory of Viscount Arsade. It's a pleasure to see you again, your ladyship. And a pleasure to meet you as well, Brigadier General. <laughs> we were simply in the area, so we thought we might drop by and pay you a visit. It's been quite some time since we last met. I was hoping to take the opportunity to apologize to my master for not staying in touch. But I see that won't be possible. Unfortunately so. <laughs> I wouldn't have minded setting eyes on the famous Radiant Blade Master. But I suppose I'll have to be content with meeting his daughter. I'm honored, General. I can't believe they're here. They seem to be provincial army officers. They seem incredibly strong, whoever they are. Their names are General Aurelia Le Guin and Brigadier General Wallace Bardius. They're said to be the two strongest generals in the provincial armies. Yeah, I don't think there are many people interested in martial arts who don't know about them. That's how famous they are. Brigadier General Bardius is otherwise known as the Black Whirlwind. He's known for his unparalleled spearmanship. 
what I've heard, he has Nord blood running through him, too. Oh, I see. He does remind me of Gaius, in a way. He seems pretty strong. A number of warriors from Nord were said to have fought with Emperor Dreykels during the War of the Lions. Perhaps he's a descendant of theirs? Yeah, that makes sense. As for the woman with him... She's generally known as the Golden Rakshasa. She's also a Countess and head of the Le Guin family, as well as commander of the La Mer Provincial Army. And hard as it is to believe, I've heard she's a practitioner of both the Arsade and Vander schools of swordsmanship. Wasn't the Vander school practiced by the guardians of the Imperial family? She, she sounds like a monster. Is she even human? Both of them are key public figures in the Alliance. What could they possibly want in a neutral region such as this, I wonder? Still, it won't do to have you standing around here. Allow me to show you to my father's office. Klaus, would you prepare some tea? Oh, there's no need to concern yourself with that. Seeing that the Viscount isn't here gave us all the information that we needed. What might you be suggesting? The Eddies. We didn't come to criticize anyone for the Crimson Wing's appearance near Trista. Uh. Still, it's always good to know who you're fighting against. The way I see it, you're continuing to remain neutral now. But if it came to it, you wouldn't be afraid to take up arms for your personal sense of justice. There's no need to be hasty. We have more than enough opponents to be going on with. For now, let's focus on drawing out Craig the Red and One-Eyed Zex. We can't allow Rufus to be the only one making any major achievements. <laughs> True enough. It would please me so if you were to fight under me one day, too. I believe you have the potential to surpass even me, given sufficient practice. I am honored that you would say so. However, my swordsmanship is inexperienced at best. I wouldn't dare presume to have the potential to surpass anyone at this stage. I would ask that you wait until I can at least best my father in a duel before making that invitation. Then wait I shall. I look forward to the day. With that, I believe it's time we took our leave. Perhaps so. I was hoping you would introduce us to your friends, but they seem to be feeling rather shy. <laughs> Teasing them, are you? Well, I'm sure we'll have the opportunity one day. I sense great potential within them. As do I. I apologize for being unable to do anything to make your visit more comfortable. Klaus, please escort them. As you wish, milady. <laughs> Come to think of it. Perhaps you wouldn't mind joining me in a battle before I depart. I haven't had the joy in quite some time. I hardly think an old man such as myself would prove to be a worthy opponent to one of your strength, General. Oh, I wouldn't be so sure about that. You haven't let your guard down for a second since I stepped into the Gram. Laura! I'm sorry that you had to see me like that. It took all that I had not to be overwhelmed by their sheer presence. I'm not surprised.
Christ. We could feel it well enough ourselves, and we weren't even in the room. That didn't stop them from noticing us, though. My fur was on end the whole time. It's unbelievable to think that people like them exist. I wonder who'd win between them and Zeno and Leo. This just goes to show how many skilled people the Alliance has among their ranks. With warriors such as them on the field to say nothing of Lord Rufus Alborea, we can't afford to underestimate them. All very true. Still, that's no reason to give up now. We need to keep pressing on. And on that note, I think it's about time we left ourselves. Let's go and bring back Eusis. And once we've done that, then we can decide what we're going to do and who we're going to be fighting against. <laughs> Indeed. Then let's start heading to Bereahard. <laughs>